Today we're going to talk about how to rectify your squeaking condenser fan motor. So my units are were built in 1993 and I'm not about to replace them because I keep hearing from every air conditioning repairman that the old units are better and I know the efficiency rating is not great on it but neither is replacing an air conditioner every five or six or ten years with these uh, newer units that seem to not be as well built. This is an Amana unit. These were sold under the Goodman name uh, back in the, in the day and still sold under the Goodman name. Surprisingly a lot of the parts might be universal in some areas but uh, this fan motor is the latest thing and I have two units one on this side of the house and one on the other side of the house uh, a split ranch system here and the fan itself is a GE motor and is squeaking intermittently and I've had this happen now for years um, and it was happening to the other one for years actually the other one seized up and then last year I had to replace it finally but what I am going to show you how to do is to oil your fan motor and this is going to get me by it could be months it could be years I've had to oil this one several times lately so I've gone ahead and ordered a fan motor look forward to another YouTube video soon on me replacing this fan motor when this fan motor gets here because I can order the fan motor for $60 online or $65 or something like that with tax and it's locally $125 to purchase so I'm just going to wait on it and oil this one and get it by for another week until the fan motor gets here. So I'll also show you uh, in a minute you know the specs on the motor and how to take a good guess at replacing it if your fan motor is no longer available but here when I turn off the camera what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off these uh, little nuts here and then I'm going to flip this fan upside down but before I do that I'm going to make sure that the power is off I've already turned off the power on the inside of the house most disconnects for air conditioning I believe look like this you see this pull you can pull this out and that ensures that the power is off see it says on because that's the way I pulled it out but if you flip it up up and plug it back in upside down it's off so what I like to do is remove all room for air and just lay it right there on the top while I'm working on it so I'm gonna pause this and I'll be right back with uh, the top of this off and flipped over Okay, I've taken those small nuts out, and now this is loose. One thing I want to show you before I do it is this little chase here. This little block wire it has wires in it that come in here. And you want to be careful when you turn this over that you don't pull those wires out. Um, this cover over here has all the wires underneath and everything, so I don't want to be rewiring anything. So I'm going to be careful when I'm going to flip that over. Uh, yours may be different. Sometimes the wires are just simply zip tied across to get them up and away from the fan. So you could cut the zip ties and then zip tie them back. All right, uh, let me flip this over. Now that I've flipped it over, it, the general concept is this, right? Your um, air conditioning coil has coolant in it there and it needs to be cooled off out here. And the fan continues to do that. So it needs to turn and you need to have this fan go in fan motor condenser motor fan is what this is called down there down there's your actual compressor that uh, makes your coolant go around and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add some drops of oil to this fan shaft I'm going to clean it up a little bit I didn't clean it up the other day when I did it now my motor granted is very old and it's got this plug right here that I can take out and put some drops of oil in it and by the way that's hot so be careful when you touch it and it's got another one actually the same place on the other end and that reaches down into the uh, drive shaft close to the bearings and the bearings are right in there and it uh, adds oil to it so what <clears throat> what happens is that the bearings get worn out and oil will keep them going for a while but the motor is eventually going to give out and the motor will eventually get hot very hot this motor's gotten so hot here in the last year that the label's almost gone on it. It's a GE motor, and I can tell you because I know that uh, the RPMs there say 1100, um, 1100, and it tells you what amps. It's 1.38 amps, 
And what else can I tell you about this motor? It's a 48 frame. That's what you want to do is m make sure that the frame matches up when you replace these motors. And that it's a 48 frame. And, and when you get that close, and I believe this is a uh, one-third horsepower, and I'm replacing it with a one-fifth horsepower, as long as the amps, the RPMs are in line and the frame of the motor, it should work. Of course, the shaft too, but I've got a lot of room for a longer motor shaft to hang down out. You can always cut off the motor shaft if you need to. You uh, basically replace this by taking the uh, uh, acorn nuts off the motor and the motor because it's the same frame that I'm getting will have studs that go right through down there and you can put new nuts on it maybe not acorn nuts but um, you'll be able to bolt it up um, what else can I tell you um, this is a single speed motor and, and uh, sometimes you'll get a motor that has extra wires and it's a dual speed motor those cost a little bit more usually but uh, maybe that's all you can get and so you'll want to match up your wires and to rewire it again make sure your power's off there's a capacitor in there read up about capacitors and take a sh once the power's off take a screwdriver and short your capacitor so you can touch all that because a capacitor stores energy uh, electricity and can shock you and it, it doesn't feel good if uh, so i'm told if you ever forget to do that uh, and you get a good jolt it'll store the energy even though the electricity's off so that's some safety tips um, like I said, some wires are not needed in some applications. If you have a multi-speed motor and you're replacing a single-speed motor, it's easiest to match that up and get the same number of wires. But don't worry about it. You can um, adapt it uh, for a single-speed unit usually. And I did that for the other unit on the other side of the house. So I'm going to uh, add a few drops of oil into this. And I'm going to use just regular 3-in-1 uh, oil. I've read to use mineral oil based things, products and stuff, but this seems like it actually worked the best. And to tell you the truth, when my 3 in 1 oil ran out, I used like 10W30, and I've had this container forever. It's got 10W30 in it, so that works too. And if anybody tells you it doesn't, um, they're uh, lying. <laughs> because the unit on the other side of the house, uh, it lasted a minimum of 10 years after the first time it seized with this. And so you can keep it going for a while, but if, if you're having it seize or lock up, uh, and by the way, when it seized, I was able to get it spinning again and, and oil it. But if you're having them seize or lock up or squeal, you might as well go ahead and order a new um, fan because uh, unless you take it to a motor shop, you really can't easily replace the bearings in these things. All right, so um, I'll put some drops of oil on the shaft in a minute after I clean it up, and then I'll take a pair of pliers and take that plug out and that plug out and let some a few drops run in there, and I'll be back. Okay, chances are you are, I haven't oiled it yet, but uh, chances are you're not going to have these plugs on your motor. They stopped giving you the ability to oil motors um, more than a decade ago. Uh, well, you might be able to find motors that still have these oil ports. You're wondering how to get these out? You can take a pair of needle nose pliers, and I already twisted that one a little bit, and it comes right out. It looks about the size of a rivet. It's a little aluminum plug. Set this down. I'm going to grab the other one and pull that one out. So, how do you get oil in there if you don't have um, these plugs? That's why I mentioned oil in the motor shaft. And I'm going to prop this up at an angle and drop some drops of oil in here. Let's see if I can do this one handed. I think I inherited this 3-in-1 oil canister in college from a prior roommate that left it behind. It's probably older than the air conditioner itself, or about the same age. Uh, but like I said, I just put 10W30 in it. So now, <clears throat> some people take this fan off, but I'm not going to bother doing that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... You'll notice I cleaned that up a little bit with a paper towel. I'm going to put that right there on that shaft. And then I'm going to spin this a few times. And I'm going to do the same thing. 
let that work its way right down that motor shaft now <clears throat> these ports are supposed to do the same thing and you can even see where the port goes right straight down to the shaft but I'm not going to take any chances my motor is going to take over a week to get here and it was 93 degrees today or higher here in Georgia and just a few drops of oil should get me by another week and a half or a week until uh, I replace the motor it's hitting the wire chase so uh, and now it's a challenge how long can I get out of these air conditioning units they sure do cool the house well they have not had to be charged uh, since I moved in in the year 2001 and I've even spray painted the top of this one because it was uh, as you can see it's rusted on the bottom side to make it look better on the top but uh, I kind of like challenges like that keeping something going and uh, seeing how long I can get out of it some people might call me cheap I just really get a lot of satisfaction out of doing that I've got uh, I've had cars that had over 200,000 miles on them and are still being driven uh, out on the road uh, Toyotas of course and there's your plug for Toyota Scotty Kilmer all right should be in pretty good shape there I'm going to put the plugs back into this tap them in with uh, the end of the pliers and then I'm going to turn this back over and we'll get it bolted back in place all right I've got everything back in place here I put the nuts back on and uh, this wiring chase uh, yours may be a little different but uh, it may give you just a little bit of a challenge to make sure you get the whole line back up in the flange and yours, yours is going to be different because it'll probably be a different model um, but this is all secure and what I did was while that was still upside down I spun the fan several times to work that oil in you didn't see that because of, uh, I paused the camera uh, those plugs by the way um, if you do see them on motors a lot of times they'll be plastic so they work the same way a bright yellow plastic I've seen them in the past so um, I'll turn the air conditioner back on here in a moment. <clears throat> We're going to put this back in the cutoff switch and we'll go into the house and we'll uh, turn that on and uh, hopefully we'll be squeak free. Yay, and now you see we're back in business now and we're squeak free. That ought to last a few days. Listen, thanks for watching Swimming in the Deep. Deeply appreciate you watching it through to now. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'm almost to a thousand subscribers at the time of publishing this video. I only need like 37 more. Every single subscriber helps. Thanks so much.